First of all, let's be clear. Our faith is not in a historical reconstruction. Our faith is in a living person, the resurrected Jesus. On the other hand, it's important that we not have blind faith, nor as much of the church has what I would call deaf faith. They've had an encounter with Jesus. They know him to be alive, and by his spirit, they have experienced his redemptive power, saving power. But too often, the church is deaf to the words of Jesus of Nazareth. Their faith is not informed about the reality of this man, Jesus of Nazareth. History is not the final arbiter of truth. God's word is true, and that word became incarnate in Jesus. He is the truth of God. And it's in our encounter with him that authentic Christian faith is birthed and continues to grow as we dwell in him. He is, as the Apostle Peter declared at the Temple Mount on the Feast of Shavuot, Pentecost, this resurrected Jesus of Nazareth is the one whom God made both Lord and Messiah. That's a given for our faith. But at the same time, we understand that our faith is directed to a living person, not to scholarly analysis, not to a historical reconstruction. At the same time, we want to grow not only in the grace, but also in the knowledge of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Messiah. You see, from a Greek or Hellenistic point of view, when we speak about truth, we tend to speak of it in two ways. First of all, truth is that which conforms to the facts, conforms to reality. If I say I'm wearing a blue shirt, that is true if it conforms with the reality, which in this case is a blue shirt. We also speak about truth from a Greek philosophical point of view as not only conforming to reality, but a coherent conclusion drawn from reliable premises so that the pieces fit together in a way that's logical. If we say, for example, A equals B and B equals C, then we can conclude that A equals C. So truth is a coherent conclusion it's also a conclusion that conforms with reality. But from a biblical point of view, there's even another dimension of truth, and that's the truth of covenant. It's not just a matter of facts conforming. It's not just a matter of conclusions cohering consistently in logical ways. It's a matter of an, a relationship in covenant with the one who is faithful and true. Let's say it another way. Truth at one level, in fact, at the level of conformance and coherence, truth is an issue of information. Information is very important. We want as reliable information as we can conclude or discern or deduce from the evidence we have. But there's another level of truth that pervaded the Jewish mind of Yeshua, Jesus. And that is intimacy. To know is to be intimate with. We're wanting to encourage you to grow in His grace. That was God's redemptive initiative, bringing you into relationship with Him through the faithfulness of Yeshua unto death on a cross on our behalf. But we also want to grow in the knowledge of Jesus. We need to know Him as Lord He's risen, he's reigning, he shall suddenly and gloriously return. But we also need to know him as Messiah, a Jewish Messiah, the Messiah of Israel. Indeed, in many ways, it's just as appropriate to say that Jesus was Israel's son, as it is to say he was the son of God. He is both Lord and Messiah. When that word became flesh, it became flesh in the first century in the land of Israel, 
among the Jewish people. And that's the world we're going to enter into. I'm going to invite you to enter into the world of Jesus.